the now former liberal MP who crossed the floor yesterday to the Conservatives said she did so because she didn't like the direction her government was taking on trade, the economy, and foreign policy. Leona Alisov also says her attempts to raise concerns were met with silence, but CBC News has obtained exclusive new details that contradict some of what Ms. Alislev says. David Cochran joins us now with those details. Hey, David, thanks for being with us. You're welcome. So what have you come across? Yeah, it's not a one-day story. Yesterday we had the punch. Today we have a counterpunch, and it comes in the form of an email and an audio recording. An email sent by Ms. Alislev to Foreign Affairs Minister Christian Freeland and an audio recording of her remarks at a fundraiser with the Prime Minister. I want to start with the email. This was sent to Christian Freeland's personal account by Leona Alislev on July 11th of this year in the middle of the NATO summit in Brussels. And this is not the sort of email you see from a discount contented MP. Christian, I wanted to tell you that the hug and kiss you gave me on the a out, way out was just truly the best. You made me cry. You're just so wonderful, and I'm so sorry I missed the chance to give you a big squeeze back in return, so please let me send you a virtual hug and then offer you a rain check for a real hug for when I see you next. You and the Prime Minister and Harge, that being Harge at Sajj and the Defence Minister, were truly awesome today. This is not only who we are as Canadians, but also who we are as global citizens, and that was on full display today. Again, and thank you for everything you do. You remember yesterday, Vashi, when Leona Alislev announced that she was leaving, she cited the failure of the government on defense policy and on foreign policy. This in the middle of a NATO summit, which is all about defense and foreign policy, praising the foreign minister, the prime minister, and the defense minister for their conduct. Less than a month before she contacted Andrew Scheer to request that they meet in person. Exactly. And, and, and it goes on. Like, this was July 11th. Nine days later, July 20th, the prime minister is in her riding, headlining a fundraiser. You remember yesterday, that she also talked about her concerns being met with silence, as if as a member of the team it wasn't valued. Well, we, the Prime Minister went to this fundraiser, he gave a speech, she gave the closing thank you remarks, and we want to play you an excerpt of that audio now, and this is what Leone Alislev had to say on July 20th. Take a listen to this. The greatest thing about being a member of Parliament in this Prime Minister's government is that we are each and every one of us valued for the contribution that we bring to the team. We each have our strengths and we're valued for it. And then last week when I was in Brussels at the NATO summit and the Prime Minister was there, you would have been truly amazed, proud, overcome with the power of the remarks that this Prime Minister made, not to Canadians, but to members of Parliament, of, from governments, from social organizations, from all over the world. And he set the example for what our NATO allies and other countries can become. I would like to thank this Prime Minister for creating the country that I am honored to serve and defend, not only for what he's doing here at home, but for how he's representing us around the world. So Vashi, she may have wanted to add, I can't imagine how these words will come back to haunt me, because when you compare that fawning praise of the Prime Minister, how he's an example to our NATO allies, how he has positioned Canada well on the world stage, to yesterday saying, on the world stage, Canada has yet to rise to the occasion. My, my attempts to raise my concerns with the government were met with silence. It is my duty to stand and be counted. Our country is at risk. The contradiction is stark. And as you reported last night, this was July 20th, less than two weeks later, she's in a hotel room near the airport, in Toronto talking to Andrew Scheer about switching sides. So the concerns she said she raised that were met with silence, the Liberals you talked to today, they say there's no record of her ever requesting a meeting, there's not a lot of track record of ever raising concerns, and if you look at her public comments and her private emails, there was nothing but praise from Leona Alislev to the top people in this government. Interesting, because yesterday when we had her on, asked, so what happened in between then? And, and, and she, she wasn't able to articulate, I guess, the specific reason, but she did talk about more generally, I guess, the same reasons yeah. that you brought up today. What are the Conservatives saying about this? We, we, we've reached out to them. We don't have an answer yet or any kind of a comment yet. I'm told that Leona Alislev's office will be sending me something soon, so when we get that, we'll get it to you so you can get it on the air. Excellent. Thanks so much, David. Great reporting. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> Welcome back to Power in Politics. As David Cochran told us earlier in the show, former Liberal, now Conservative MP, Leona Alislev had some words of praise for the federal government this summer. Take a listen to part of her remarks at a fundraiser in July. You would have been truly amazed, proud, overcome with the power of the remarks that this Prime Minister made, not to Canadians, but to 
members of parliament, of, from governments, from social organizations, from all over the world. And he set the example for what our NATO allies and other countries can become. I would like to thank this Prime Minister for creating the country that I am honored to serve and defend, not only for what he's doing here at home, but for how he's representing us around the world. So since David reported that on the show, we have received a statement from Leona Alisev's office, and I'm going to read it in full. This was a very personal email to someone I still consider a friend. I was at an event in Brussels with Ministers Freeland and Sajjan, as well as the Prime Minister, and it was a good event. However, one good event does not equal delivering the foundational change Canada needs at home and abroad. My decision to leave the government was based on the direction I feel Canada is headed due to a number of actions and policy decisions taken over the last three years. And that statement is specifically in reference to an email that was sent from Ms. Alice Lev to Christian Freeland, essentially praising her for a lot of similar things that you just heard in that audio. So, of course, it's time to bring in the power panel to debrief it all. In Vancouver, former Conservative Cabinet Minister Stockwell Day. In Toronto, Supriya Devetti, host of The Morning Show on Global News, Radio 640 Toronto. And here with me, political commentator and former NDP MP, Francoise Boivin, and the CBC's own Catherine Cullen. Hi, everybody. Hello. Nice to see you. Uh, Stockwell, why don't I start with you? I mean, it was a, a pretty big story yesterday. This adds a little confusion to the matter. <laughs> Well, anytime someone has crossed the floor, and it doesn't happen often, uh, their past comments will be used by one side or another, and that's certainly the case here. I think the problem for the PM is going to be this is a very credible um, MP, female MP. She ran her own family business. She was uh, in senior management at places like Bombardier and IBM, and of course, most prominently, I think, uh, a senior Air Force officer. And uh, all of that speaks of great credibility. The Liberals always said wonderful things about her, so maybe they're not saying so much now. Uh, what is, what is the, create, the problem it's creating for the PM, of course, is they were all set to go for the jugular against Andrew Scheer related to Max Bernier, and now uh, not so much. So these things happen sometimes in politics, but there's no question uh, in my mind, just as an individual, the Liberals have lost a uh, credible individual and the Conservatives have gained one. Uh, Francois, certainly yesterday the, the news cycle was favorable to the Conservatives, but does, does what we've just heard, what David's reporting, deflate that in, at all? Um, yes and no, boy, I love those politicians' answer. Um, yes, it does deflate a bit. I mean, it changed the narrative. It, it changed the tune of the day. Yesterday was all about the gain from the Conservatives. Uh, now it's all about the move itself. Uh, why did she do it? Uh, I mean, it's it's easy to hear her answer, but at the same time, it's not necessarily believable. I think uh, we have to realize that it's mostly uh, a very uh, strategic decision on her part. I think it's an electoral, in my view, uh, decision on her part. Because Why do you think that? I, I think that because she's probably looking forward uh, 390... Seven days. Seven days. <laughs> Seven days. Yeah, Where's counting, the yeah. countdown? <laughs> and uh, she, she realized that uh, maybe this writing has better chance as, as uh, to turn conservative. That being said, she is exactly what I think is the problem with our politics right now, is the fact that when I hear an MP saying, uh, I, I was not able to talk, I'm like, excuse me? You're an MP, you're elected to represent some writing. Uh, you're, you've been elected by people, first of all, because you were with a party, so that's kind of a spitting in the face of all those electors. At the same time, she's saying, I, I, I cannot move if my party doesn't give me the authorization to speak. That's basically what she's giving us as, as, as a message. That was one of her message. She doesn't like the policy, try changing it. Try, uh, try within. I mean, you she says ran. she did. She says she did raise the concerns, and they I'm were met not, with silence. She, she was not very convincing. I mean, I, we never heard about it. We never heard because that might move the debate a bit if we know that there is a bit of dissension, discussion, debate among amongst members of a party. I think it would give an impression that democracy is better. But I defy all these main parties: conservatives, liberals. They all played that game at one part or the other. I still remember to this day being in my living room after losing my 2006 election, seeing David Emerson uh, at the swearing-in cabinet, and I'm like, 
Oh, was he occupying a function that I didn't know that he had to pass the baton to the conservative? No, he was run. He accepted to to change side just to become minister. I mean, you become so cynical when you see things. I prefer the NDP way, and I'll, I'll conclude on that because I saw Maria Morani leave the Bloc Québécois, which was a big coup for us NDP at the time. Anything that would hit the Bloc Québécois was a good coup for the NDP in Quebec, and. Jack Layton said, no, you are not becoming, uh, we have a policy, you become independent, and uh, you'll run as, a, as an NDP. That's the only way you can change a party. I think it's more fair for the people who elected you. Except, Supriya, according to Eric Grenier's analysis, two-thirds of them get re-elected with their new party. Yeah, and that's a, an interesting stat, but, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if any of you guys do, but... Uh, I do, you're, actually, yeah. You, okay, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a new segment it's, for the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, your guess is as good as mine, and I know historically that riding in particular uh, tends to lean blue, so, you know, maybe she was just uh, hedging her bets here and figured it was, it was safer. I, I think just generally, though, if you're going to step out on someone or if you're going to, uh, you know, I will politely say sort of screw over your former colleagues, it's probably best to make sure they don't have seats uh, <laughs> that they can uh, bring out uh, to, to show the sort of disingenuineness. And to Francoise's point here, you know, we've heard a lot from uh, backbench MPs that have not been happy with uh, multiple aspects of government policy. And, uh, my own MP, Nathaniel Erskine-Smith, is one whom uh, we, we hear from uh, quite a bit, particularly uh, when it comes to drug policy. Um, Robert Falcon Wallet uh, as well. It's not exactly he's, uh, you know, a, a meek and mild-mannered guy who hasn't ever expressed his uh, dissension here. So I I think it's interesting that, uh, you know, and I know her, her statement was like, well, you know, we're, it's a, I still consider her a friend uh, in terms of Minister Freeland, mm -hmm. and so that's what it was. But the email wasn't just like a friend email. It refers to, like, you know, how they were representing uh, Canadians on the global stage. It was uh, a, a NATO summit, which, of course, is all about uh, foreign policy and representing Canada, uh, Canada and Canadians on a global stage. And just I'll just end on, on this point. You know, I have a lot of friends that are conservative. I have a lot of friends that come on this show. Uh, and I, if I send them texts or messages after the fact because I thought, you know, they had a particularly good uh, appearance or, or, or panel, I don't go out of my way to all of a sudden change my opinions. I just said, yo, good job, and we leave it at that, and that's it. I've never gotten a yo, good job. <laughs> yo, good job. Uh, i got to check my emails, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the thing that's interesting about she is let's take Leon Alislev at her word when she says um, that she tried to raise this and she couldn't. Let's say that, that that is indeed the case. Then you have to look at what Yes, that audio that David Cochran provided, in which she says, the greatest thing about being a member of parliament in this prime minister's government is that we are each and every one of us valued for the contribution we bring to the team. It, it really did sound like what she was saying in that moment was entirely counter to what she said yesterday. So, you know, one version of these events has to be accurate or the other. It really can't be both. And I think it is going to breed a lot happened, of... Yeah. yeah, well, I, I suppose so. But then why... I mean, the statement yesterday was essentially this is something that evolved over the course mm -hmm. of years, right? And even what we were hearing from Conservative MPs um, was that this is something that had come together over time. So it raises questions, but I think, unfortunately for Leona Alislev, the biggest question it raises today is about her credibility, when, in fact, yesterday what uh, we were hearing from a lot of Conservatives, I think particularly behind closed doors, was just how delighted they were not only to sort of have this win in this dramatic moment uh, on the first day of Parliament, but also the her caliber, right? I mean, Stockwell talked about it a moment ago. Her CV is very impressive. Mm -hmm. Something like this, I do think, sort of, it, it doesn't completely strike out the moment, but it does perhaps undermine it. Okay, we're going to put. And the let's not forget. Let's so not forget the liberals were, were overjoyed when uh, Belinda Stronach left. Oh, definitely, we were. Well, I'm, gl so I'm glad you bring that happens, up because we have this a little. Happens both ways. We have, yeah, we have a little uh, little package coming up in, in a few <laughs> moments, going over all the famous floor crossers mm -hmm. because we're going to put the power panel on hold for uh, a few minutes heading into break. But we do have that look back at historical floor crossings. Four MPs have either switched allegiance or quit their party to sit as an independent. Not included in that number is the most recent example, Quebec MP Maxime Bernier, who left the Conservatives and launched the People's Party of Canada. The last high-profile floor crosser was Eve Adams. In 2015, she defected from the Conservatives and joined the Liberals. But Adams would later lose a Liberal nomination race to Marco Mendocino. In 2006, David Emerson crossed the floor to the Conservatives two weeks after he was elected as a Liberal. The move enraged some of his constituents. Emerson did not seek re-election. 
Then, who can forget Belinda Stronach's shocking exit from the Conservatives to the Liberals in 2005 after vying to lead the Conservatives just a year earlier? Her defection would save Paul Martin's government from falling on a vote of confidence. The Liberals were later defeated, though, in the 2006 election. Stronach, however, was re-elected as a Liberal MP by a greater margin than she had as a Conservative.